Hello and welcome back to the Premier Injuries channel. Today we're doing one of our data deep dives, looking at some of the stuff that we've been working on behind the scenes. So today we're talking about the cost of injuries to each Premier League club. And we're also going to be talking about the most expensive individual players as well, but that'll be coming up a little bit later. But first and foremost, Ben, can you explain the methodology that we use to work this out? Yeah, so for context, we classify injuries as those which result in a player missing at least one Premier League game in this instance. Um, and then we break down that uh, the, the term of the absence into days, and then we calculate that against a daily salary rate. Now, this is publicly obtained salary data rate. Uh, we try to use credible websites as much as we possibly can in terms of the BBC, the mainstream broadsheet newspapers. And we also use sites like Capology, who are well respected in terms of their gathering and collating uh, of salary data. So we know it's not going to be 100% accurate, but to the best of our ability, we're able to sort of put those figures. And that's what we attributed in terms of getting a cost per injury per team for this analysis. So let's get into the teams then. We're going to put the table up on the screen. And at the top there, it's Manchester United. I mean, do you want to talk us through some of the big kind of highlights in the table? Yeah, I mean, it's no surprise to see Manchester United topping that injury table. Um, again, you know, you talk about the size of their budget, their overall uh, salary expenditure per annum. You know, they're wearing above anybody else within the Premier League. Again, that's uh, in and around, or certainly in excess of £200 million pounds per year. So, you know, like I say, there's, there's some big earners within that squad. And four out of the top five costliest injuries of the season were all attributed to Manchester United players. Now, well-documented injury to Paul Pogba. There's a couple of injuries there. That makes him the most expensive sidelined player in terms of salaries this season. We also heard Rafael Varane. He arrived at Manchester United. He's had well-documented injury problems in the past. Unfortunately, you know, he's coming into a new environment, a new team, a new philosophy, style of players, and all of that's probably contributed, as well as his involvement in the Euros last season, into an injury-disrupted season as well. Edison Cavani, he features in that top five. You know, some may argue that he's been putting country before domestic football in club, suffered several setbacks, Achilles being one. And again, you know, the amount of time that he spent out has proved pretty costly uh, for Manchester United. I do also want to highlight Everton because they are near the top as well. And kind of looking at our other data that is on our Twitter, we're going to be writing some articles as well. So do stay tuned to the website. But in terms of that, it just seems to be a costly season in terms of monetary terms, if you look at the time loss injuries there, but also in terms of actual days lost, they've, they've had a really torrid season, haven't they? They have, yes. And I mean, that started at the very beginning of the campaign, you know, quite notably, um, the big figure that lost was Dominic Calvert-Lewin. He arrived off the back of that European Championships uh, with a toe injury. That hampered that little bit of pre-season training that he maybe could have got in before the start. And unfortunately, he suffered several soft tissue setbacks, his thigh problem. And again, it wasn't really until the end of the season where he was able to string a couple of games together. But, you know, Andre Gomez, Richarlison, uh, Luca Dina at the time, you know, players who all picked up injuries in, uh, in that midfield as well, with Alain Ducore, um, and all of those contributed to the toughies, well, you know, just surviving um, and staying in the Premier League by the skin of their teeth. Now, looking at the bottom of the table, we've got Crystal Palace, Norwich and Brentford. Uh, and one of the things that we've evaluated and also people have said to us when we've done this previously is obviously um, it's interesting to look at the total time loss injuries and total sal salary expenditure. But then when you do it as a percentage of the total output as well it's it gives you maybe a fairer insight so obviously Brentford and Norwich have some of the lowest salaries in the Premier League as well so they could have 100 injuries but if they all cost a fraction of what Manchester United's cost of of even one player then it's going to to skew the numbers a little bit 
Yeah, and again, to help sort of quantify that, to give us a, a level playing field, we looked and, and we took an overall salary figure. We then calculated the total cost of injuries and then we worked that out as a percentage based on that sort of that accumulative figure. Now, with re- for the majority of teams, that tended to hover in and around that sort of 9 to 12% mark of, of their total salary budget was spent on players being sidelined. Crystal Palace... A bigger, you know, one an exception. We have talked about on several occasions the impact of Patrick Vieira down at Selhurst Park, both in terms of what he's doing on the training pitches and during game day, but also that shake up of the squad in pre season, getting rid of some of those old timers. And no offense, you know, the likes of Gary Cahill and, and, and Scott Dan and replacing them with, with players who are, you know, younger and, and more capable of, of getting that those sessions in back to back on the training pitches. And their percentage of turnover that was spent on salaries is one of the lowest that we have at five percent. And I guess, you know, it gives a fairer context to those numbers as well. But I think people will be really interested as well. Who are the most expensive players? Now, you've kind of given almost a little bit of a spoiler there, saying that quite a few of them are Manchester United players. But talk us through the top five. Yeah, so single injury, um, you know, comes as no surprise. Ben Chilwell suffered that setback in the Champions League. That was a ruptured ACL. And there was an initial delay with regards to what would happen. There was hope that maybe he didn't have to have surgery, but unfortunately that operation put him out practically for the last game, uh, you know, the end of the season, although he did make a five-minute cameo in game week 38. So that injury came in at around five million. Like I say, that's based purely on salary. There's a lot of other figures to, to add in and around that. Um, in terms of the most expensive player overall, in terms of, of expenditure on the sidelines, well, that's that you know that's afforded to Paul Pogba. Two big injuries there really that tushed his total up to over well over five million, and of course that's reflected in his um, you know daily salary rate. He's one of the biggest earners within the Premier League and indeed across Europe. And and like I say, with Rafael Vian, uh, Edison Cavani, they also feature very highly yeah and and coming in at number five is Anthony Martial we know he had that knee problem he he didn't look they didn't cut a happy figure at United during those last days before his loan moved to Seville so you often question you know is it the injury what's the motivation what was the desire to turn back he clearly wasn't happy at Old Trafford and um, you know as we've seen that he had hoped that move across to La Liga would you know maybe bring him on and uh, really put him back out there uh, but it, it hasn't really worked out again, and he suffered several setbacks since joining Seville on loan. Now, all of these are monetary costs, but I'm going to throw a little cheeky question to you. I've not prepared you for this, but um, who do you think was the worst injury in terms of maybe impact for a team? You could go with Newcastle, like one of your boys, Wilson or Trippier, uh, quite an emotive answer, or just kind of throw it out there for maybe somebody else in the Premier League. Um, several examples that we've had throughout the course of the season and that we've discussed on, on, on many a podcast, you alluded to Callum Wilson. Um, and yes, you know, he was probably our standout straight guy, still finished the season as our top scorer. Um, but that, um, you know, downturn in performance, um, you know, the hit wasn't quite as hard as we all expected. You know, Eddie Howe done a wonderful job. We had Alan San Maxim, who would, you know, deputise up front. We had Chris Wood come in. We were still getting results without Callum Wilson. So, yes, he was a huge miss, but I wouldn't say he was one of the worst. We've discussed Arsenal in the past. You know, we talked about the um, the potential of the, of the loss of the two fullbacks in Tommy Yasu and Kieran Tini. And then you also threw in the loss of Thomas Party. Now, you could argue that, um, you know, the points per game ratio when he plays is much higher than when he's out of the team. And it was maybe his absence, which probably cost them that Champions League automatic qualifying spot. So, you know, huge impact there. Um, One that really does spring to mind, and it's not necessarily an an individual injury as such, but Leeds United. Um, We've just recently heard from Marcelo Bielsa, and he sort of pinpoints the fact that he got his, uh, that he was sacked based purely on injuries. And, and that's right to an extent. I mean, ultimately, it's results-driven 
business and it's the results that got him the sack. But when you contextualise, when you look at who would be missing, key players for that lead squad this season, Patrick Bamford, Calvin Phillips, Luke Aylin, uh Stuart Dallas with that serious injury, Liam Cooper, all big players... Tag on to that Adam Forshaw, who would have come in for Calvin Phillips, also uh, inj- picked up quite a few injuries. And what that means is, you now Marcelo Bielsa did have a lot of injuries, but how many times have we discussed it before? Leeds didn't seem to have a plan B. He had his way of playing. He had a style. He had an intensity that he was known for. And he was almost trying to put square pegs in round holes. Regardless of the personnel that he had available at his dis- you know, disposal, he would still go out and play the same way. And it was those players who were coming in that were maybe required to play a higher intensity game that they used to, or they're maybe required to play out of position with different demands on the body, which were causing these other injury setbacks. And it was all, it was a vicious cycle where the leads couldn't keep, you know, a, a real solid nucleus of players available. And ultimately, you know, it almost cost them their top flight status. Really good insight there. And, and this is why I asked you that question, because it's not always the money that counts or, or things like that. Sometimes a footballing loss is much more important than a monetary loss. But that is the end of our deep dive analysis on that issue. As always, please do hit that subscribe button. We've got so much more content coming through the summer. And as always, you can ask us questions below if you've got any injury related queries. But for now, Going to wish you the best of luck, the best of health, and we will see you again very soon.